Hey everyone, it's Tom Abbott here, and thanks so much for joining us on another episode of the Selling in Asia podcast. I am thrilled to have uh, a friend of ours who we've known for some time, and this is Dr. Natalia Wychowski. And uh, Natalia and I met in Dubai a couple of years ago, and we had a really great time and did some really great uh, collabs there and some interviews and some great conversations. So I thought it would be great to have her back on the podcast now, especially given that she just launched her first book, Personal Branding with LinkedIn. So first of all, Natalia, congratulations on the book and welcome back to the Selling in Asia podcast. Thank you so, so much, Tom, for this opportunity and for your kind words. And I remember, I think I held your book in my hands most probably, I don't know, four years ago or something I when I met Gautam. He's like, you need to meet that guy one day in person. He has his book. Check it out. It's not so far away from what you do. And I looked at your book. I took a marker, like a highlighter, and I highlighted through this. And I had like the biggest respect for you because you wow. wrote a book. And I still have the biggest respect. Uh, now I have my own book and I'm like, wow. I'm a little bit like Tom. Amazing. That's awesome. That's so <laughs> great. Cool. And was that my first book? Was that The Soho Solution or Social Selling, my second book? Ah, the, sec the second one, The Selling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Social Selling, I love that book because I wrote that five years ago. And here we are, fast forward to 2020. And Social Selling is pretty much the only way people can sell right now. Face-to-face -face is a real challenge. And yep. being able to sell digitally is key. So that's why I wrote that book. So it's now more relevant than ever. Yeah. which is a perfect segue into your book, <laughs> super relevant right now. It's personal branding with LinkedIn. So why don't we just start with, you know, personal branding basics. So mm -hmm. what exactly is personal branding? So I think one of the best quotes that I've found on this topic comes from Jeff Bezos, who supposedly once said that your brand is where other people say about you when you're not in the room. Now let's reflect on that a little bit. Because when I say it, a lot of people are like, Ooh. they're like, yeah, it, it hurts. Because that means that the way how we speak, how we talk, the, the feelings that we trigger in people, the stuff that we wear, our body language, our social media content, all of that is our personal brand. And it means that we have one if we like it or not. Because some people argue like, I don't have a personal brand. I am not a personal brand. I'm like, nope, you have one if you like it or not. And now you can make the active decision if you allow other people and circumstances to dictate who you are and what you do and what you stand for or to stand up to grow up to take the reins of leadership into your own hands and say okay you know what that's the reality of life um, I mean if you live in any kind of society if you live on your own with your cat or your dog or your donkey somewhere far away from civilization you know up a hill you don't need personal branding but besides that as long as you live with other human beings you have it you need it and instead of being a passive victim of your circumstances why don't you decide how you want to be perceived, how you want to help other people, how you want to be known, and then, you know, elegantly, diplomatically polish, steer, and um, produce the brand that you want to be in order to help yourself and in order to help others. So, why, so for those people that maybe haven't bought in and they don't quite get it, and I, I love what you, what you said. I mean, that quote by Jeff Bezos is awesome, right? Your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room, and that's so true. But for those people that still don't get it, they haven't bought in, why does everybody need personal branding? Because people Google you. And if they don't use Google, they use Yahoo or whatever. Or Bing, and it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it doesn't matter if you go for a date or if you go for a job interview or if you are a service provider and people have a look for your services or for your products online. They will all use some type of search engine and you have a problem in two cases. Number one, I don't find you. I don't find anything about you. Mm. That is a problem because we live in 2020. That's a little bit weird. Are you awkward? Are you, are you maybe weird? Like, should I be worried about you because I don't find anything about you? Or do you just live a boring life? You know, these are all of the, the thoughts that we have in our mind and they don't serve you. But on the other side, I also have a problem when I find material about you that really isn't aligned with who you are, what you do. So why don't you stand up 
and say, okay, you know what, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is what people should know about me. And then especially work on your LinkedIn profile, because whenever somebody looks up for you and you have an open profile on LinkedIn, your LinkedIn profile will definitely be amongst the first three entries on the top of that search engine results page, not sometimes even the first one. So that's one reason why you need to work on your personal brand. And I mean, another reason is that if you work for somebody, you will get paid approximately 10 to 25% more with a clearly structured personal brand uh, compared to people with a average brand. I mean, wow. money, hey, that should motivate people. So that's, a huge, have, that's a huge right? distinction. I mean, that's yeah. that bears repeating. So you're saying yeah. that people that have a so-called personal brand are going to increase the, their chances of a salary by what was that percent? Uh, usually a lot of studies say 10. Some studies say up to 25%. And you know why that is so? Because people know you are the expert in this. You can solve these problems. Mm. This is what I'm good at. This is how I help other people. These are my testimonials. This is my network. This is what it's all about. Clearly communicate this and you'll get more money. So what can people, I love this, right? And we're talking to salespeople here. So everyone wants to make more money. So I think the message for sales folks out there is start developing your personal brand, right? So that sure. you get known by people and you're, you're searchable, you're Googleable, or at least when you're not in the room, they're thinking about the things you want them to think about. So what are some, what are some good you know, questions that people should start asking themselves to try to figure out what their, what their brand is all about? Mm -hmm. I think the, the three biggest questions are, number one, what kind of problems do you solve? Because mm -hmm. I believe that every job on this planet solves a problem. If you're a dentist, you fix people's problems with teeth. If you're a cobbler, you fix people's shoes. I mean, even if you're a serial killer, you fix certain problems, right? That's true. Hmm. So what kind of problem do you solve? What kind of real world problem do you solve? That is incredibly important. Second question, for whom do you solve it? Because you can't be everybody's darling. What is your niche? And it doesn't matter if you have your own business or if you work for somebody. So if you are a sales expert, say like a sales expert for what? In which industry um, or in um, for which country, in, in which cultures, for which products? Like what are you good at selling? Like, or in, in where? Like make it easier for me because I do believe that, yeah, I mean, the core of selling is the same, but you sell different when you sell diapers or it's maybe different when you sell um, a high luxury oh, product. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. You know, luxury know, goods versus fast-moving <laughs> consumer goods, two yeah. totally different things, right? Exactly. B to B, and, B to C, yeah. right? Outside sales, inside sales, totally different. Exactly. And the third question is, um, what's the end result? So when I work with you, what do I get? Do I save money? Do I make more money? Uh, do I lose weight? Do I feel happier? Mm. Um, do I save time? Do I, like, what is it? What is the end result? And ideally, when do I get that end result? And again, when you can clearly communicate that this is game changing, you won't believe how many people are not able to say that. It's sad, isn't it? When you ask people, yeah, what, what's your thing? Like, what are you good at? And what do you want to be known for? So I love some of the questions that you ask in your book. You know, you're telling people to start reflecting on, you know, uh, what activities do I enjoy? How can I help other people? Um, how do I want to make a positive contribution to society? Who do I want to work with? You know, yep. and, and how would I like to work and maybe where would I like to work? So really getting a holistic view or just this great um, perspective on what's most important to you can help define your brand. And I think, Natalia, attract the right people towards you, right? Absolutely. Because in the end... I mean, there are so many beautiful people out there and so many amazing companies and so many opportunities. And, and it's okay. Not everybody needs to like everybody and not everybody needs to hire everybody. Not everybody needs to buy every product. That's what makes us, makes us diverse. That's what makes the, the world so beautiful and colorful. So by actively positioning yourself and saying, this is who I am, this is what I stand for, automatically you will position yourself and stand against something. Not because you want to hurt other people or because you want to be a bully or because you want to be whatever. It is just what it is. The easiest example- You want example, to attract the right people. Right? It's not about exactly. repelling people. It's yeah. about attracting yeah. the right people. Yeah. 
yeah. building yeah. a tribe, right? Yeah. And the people who resonate with you, who have similar goals and values will like it and others don't. You know, this is the best way how to attract the people that you want, the ideal clients, the ideal employer, the ideal opportunities. Yeah, Natalia, I, I love that. So look, you and I are both huge fans of, of LinkedIn. We don't need to be sold on its benefits. I mean, we're, we're huge advocates. But for some people listening, maybe they're not sure. So, you know, why, why do you feel that LinkedIn is the best platform for building your own brand compared with, let's say, you know, Facebook or Instagram? Sure. So first of all, people on LinkedIn are in a business mindset, which makes it easier to communicate with them. In my perception, a lot of people who are active on Facebook or Instagram, they rather use this platform to communicate to their friends um, or to be entertained, while people use LinkedIn to rather be informed. So social media is a communication, information and entertainment tool. And um, sometimes, especially when you want to sell, when you want to do business, when you're out there because you want to network, um, when you have this mindset and you approach Facebook or Instagram, uh, might not be the easiest way to, you know, get your message across. While on LinkedIn, people are on the mindset, oh, we're doing business here, so it's easier to reach them. Second thing is that, um, you know, Facebook is a super saturated at the moment. They have like, what, 2.5 a billion users on LinkedIn. We have 700 million, so it makes a huge difference. So um, you'll, get notice, you'll get noticed. There's some space yeah. there, right? It's not as noisy. Absolutely, for sure. You can build a network of up to 30,000 connections on LinkedIn. On Facebook, you can have 5,000. So again, thinking sales, thinking mm -hmm. business development. Amazing. Yes. And, um, you know, also the... And unlimited the, followers, right? I mean, that, yep. that's the thing with LinkedIn. It's sort of like you can have... I think I've got 25,000 plus connections and I think the max is maybe 30 or something like yep, that. Exactly. Yeah. But the sky is the limit as far as people who follow you. So, I mean, that's great. Absolutely. And also when you look at the user numbers, Instagram is a teenage platform. 72% of all Instagram users are teenagers. Mm -hmm. And if your product or services are not teenage related, then, you know, it doesn't make sense to spend much time on it. Right. Um, so, you know, LinkedIn, definitely the, the typical user is, is older. 41% um, of all millionaires use LinkedIn. So especially right. when you have a high-end product, spend more time on LinkedIn for sure. Yeah, I love that. And really when people are on LinkedIn, like you say, Natalia, they're already in a business mindset. So you don't have this, this abrupt interrupt or this, this friction where they're just kind of scrolling, looking at fun things, and all of a sudden you hit them with the sales message and they're like, come on, this isn't why I'm on Facebook or Instagram. They just want to have fun and be entertained, like you say. So I love what you mentioned in your book. You talked about, you know, four ways to enhance and strengthen your personal brand. So you talked about, you know, online, inside, outside, and offline. Can you maybe unpack those four a little bit, maybe starting with, with online? Sure. I mean, I believe in a holistic personal branding approach that really goes from the inside out, online, offline. Online, it's very important that you decide what's your main platform. So is it mm -hmm. LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever it is. And in order to figure that out, you need to understand. Got to get on TikTok. I got to get on TikTok. Are you? Not, I'm not, I'm not yet, but you know what? I'm just not for business, but just for fun because like, I like to dance. I like to sing. I like to goof around and our team likes to do that too. So we're thinking about having maybe like a, a Soko TikTok channel just to have some fun, you know, just, nice. I, mean, that's, I don't know. Anyway. I nice. Guess. Yeah, no, I mean, I literally choose the platform based on what kind of content you like to create and mm -hmm. where your target audience is. So yeah. that's the first thing. Then make sure that you strategically collaborate with other people so that your brand is sprinkled all over. When I Google you, I want the first 30 entries to be all about you, your webpage, your podcast, your interviews, uh, your PR work, you're being featured here, you're being on television, you're running on radio. So you really need to make sure that I find a lot about you online. And yeah, yeah no, so so let, me, let me elaborate on that a bit, Natalia, as well. You know, it, for those that are wondering, well, why is it important to have you know, multiple uh, you know, search results come up in your name or your category or whatnot? It's not just about vanity. It's not about you know, if someone types in sales speaker Singapore, I, wa I, I want Tom Abbott just to dominate the first page and have it be my website. What you want is you want to appear on other people's websites or platforms because that builds this social credit, this credibility, right? That you've been around. It's that social proof that's, that's so important. 
So if you've been interviewed and on podcasts or, you know, I just did something with, uh, with Salesforce a couple weeks ago where they invited me as like the thought leader on one of these webinars for hundreds of people. Well, if that's online, that just makes us look that much better. So it's kind of spreading out your message and, and being in a whole bunch of different places at, at once. Is, is that sort of what you're talking about? Absolutely. Because PR, I don't know who said it once, but somebody said that, you know, marketing is fantastic, but marketing runs or slides smoother on a solid PR basis. And PR is what other people say about you, usually big institutions, either thought leaders. Mm -hmm. And when you come in as an expert, you kind of get their yes, their approval, their thumbs up, their um, recognition, their space, their time. So you as an authority, you and your credibility definitely massively gets increased when you show up at other people's, you know, podcast platforms, that. whatever, for sure. I love that. You know, and for me, podcasts are, are great. You know, we've had a podcast for about a year or so. I think we just had our one year anniversary, if I'm not wrong. And we got a ton of episodes, so we're going pretty fast. But what, what I love about podcasts is it gives you an opportunity to have really great conversations like we're having right now. You can, you know, share it long form. You can put it into different audio snippets. You can put it into, you know, video excerpts and snippets. So there's just, you can transcribe it and use that as a blog, you know, a short form on LinkedIn. There are just so many ways to repurpose uh, a podcast. And it's great because you can reach out to other podcasters as well in your space and reach their audience and get to know them better. It's just a great way to, to build your brand, isn't it? For sure. And for a lot of people who are very shy and say, oh, I know I should get more speaking gigs. I know I should be on panels. I know I should be in front of the camera. This is one simple way how to you know, express yourself through your voice first mm. and to talk to other people. And once you feel as if you mastered this one, then the next natural step could be camera. Mm, I love that. The great thing about a podcast is it could be purely audio if you're camera shy, as you say, yeah. right? Or if you're not, you just say, you know what, let's throw on a camera. Now we've got, we've got video as well. So that's great. So that's the online stuff, social media, mm -hmm. uh, podcasts, you know, discussion groups, blogs yep. and whatnot. You also talk about kind of the, the offline stuff. So you talked about public relations. Are, are there any other things around offline, you know, maybe awards or books or something like that you'd want to talk about? Yeah, um, I think what is very important is a lot of people, they don't think a lot about how they present themselves. So your offline skills are very important as well in the sense of, I call them offline skills. So it's your public speaking. It is your storytelling. It is the way how you dress. I mean, people know me for my red lipstick and my blue glasses because hey, this is too. how... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? <laughs> We'll that for another podcast episode. Exactly. You know, um, so, so this is also important because there is an incredible power in symbols and mm -hmm. in colors. And, and what works for Coca-Cola and McDonald's and, and Starbucks also works for you. So get clear on these things. Make sure that you are aware on the way how you speak and improve your public speaking skills, that you work with a color consultant. Ask mm -hmm. yourself if there are any awards that you can get. So again, that other people say, yes, that person is good. Can you write a book so you are seen as the authority in your field? Can you expand your social network to make sure that you help other people, other people help you? These are just like a few things that you can work on, but it's incredibly important. And it's, you know, one fourth of the puzzle piece in order to make a huge impact. I am loving this. I'm loving this for a few reasons. One, because I'm feeling validated. Because as you're talking, Natalia, I'm trying to mentally tick some boxes. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, I've got two books and they're both on sales. You see, I've seen some people that have written a number of books, but they're on completely random topics. And Why would you do like, that? <laughs> how do I know what your yeah. thing is? Yeah. Like, what's your thing? Yeah. What are you known for? Like, if I need help with a certain situation, are you the person to call? So it's kind of like, you know, digging that hole, you want to do it, you know, um, you know, shallow, but, but, but qu quite, what is it? <laughs> I'm going to have to edit this, but it's like you narrow and deep. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Positioning, like having that, that, that spear top. What is that? What is that right. thing that you want to stand for? But a lot that of one thing spread themselves too thin, right? Mm -hmm. So they're just scratching the surface and they're going like wide. Instead yep. of like, let's just keep it a narrow focus, but super deep. So you are exactly. known as, as that person. So I love that. And winning awards as well. Making sure that those awards, like we won awards in the best sales training provider category. 
congratulations in, in three different That's countries amazing. Right? so yeah. it's sort of like people will remember you know it's all part of the brand and the positioning isn't it yeah. For sure. And I mean, let's be honest, there are a lot of trainers out there, a lot of coaches, a lot of speakers. How do I know that you are somebody that I can trust? I only know that when I see that other people really work with you. So I need customer testimonials. Mm. I want to see some kind of social proof and an award is a proof. You know, and the recommendations. Book, there you go. Perfect. Ooh, yeah, I like that. So you talk about, you know, outsides, so you talk about outer appearance. And yeah. I, I love what you said about, you know, the, the, the blue glasses and the red lipstick. So I'm not going to copy that one. I think you've got that one covered. But you know, I know, you know, some people it's, it's, it's the, 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 the colors they wear or the yeah. style, style of clothes they wear. For sure. And you know, between you and me and everybody listening right now, I've always been thinking about, yeah, do, do I want to have a distinct look and maybe I do I have no idea but I mean but is there a, a, a style or colors that I should be wearing or you know I don't know you know classic trendy this I don't know but you've, you've got me thinking Natalia and that's the important thing and I think everyone listening right now needs to be thinking as well about how do they physically present themselves because that's a big part of their personal brand isn't it Absolutely. It's like the packaging. I mean, we all know or have that experience when we buy ourselves something new and, and it's somewhat of a luxury product. Like the first thing that comes to my mind is a, a new Apple iPhone. So when you open it, like the way how you touch it, the sounds that it makes, or for example, when you also buy some great chocolate, right? The oh. way how the paper sounds, the way how the aluminum foil sounds, the, the smells, the color combination, all of that just gets you so excited before you have that thing in your hand, before you have that unpacked product in your hand. Packaging is important. Packaging and is part of the product. There you go. Oh and then some God. people are like, yeah, but isn't that kind of shallow? And we're Don't all Don't judge beautiful. a book by its cover. Yeah, exactly. That but we crazy. all buy the book with, who is like in your face. Of it is course. what it is. Look, anybody I remember, I was at a meeting one time and um, you know, a speaker was talking about, you know, what's, what's most important in a, in a, in a book? And they, they talked about understandably the importance of proofreading and editing and making sure that it's as clean as possible. Okay. Sure. And I, I just put my hand up and I said, Hey, look, that's important, but nobody is going to refuse to buy your book because of grammatical or spelling errors. Yeah. Okay. What sells books is the cover, the front cover of the book and the back cover of the book. So as long as you get those two things, right, people will buy the book. Is, and, and sure. I, there was some pushback. No, it has to be a good quality product. And I said, I'm not disputing that it has to be a good quality product. Yeah, for I'm sure. Just saying, don't discount the power of marketing and branding in what sells books. The whole thing is it's best selling books, not best written books. The, yeah. the highest grossing films that you see are not always the best films. They're the ones with the best trailers that get people to go to the movie. And I'm not saying that that's the right way to do it. I'm just saying that's the way the world is. Yes, I 1,000, 1 million percent agree with you. It is what it is. And instead of hating it, find your way of playing that game. I mean, right. um, I think it was Shakespeare who said, what if life is uh, just a stage and all we do is theater? You know, uh, maybe we need the applause of other people uh, mm. in order to stand in the right spotlight to, to be seen, to make the most out of us. I've just listened to a great conversation of Joe Rogan and Kevin Hart. And Kevin Hart said... Rogan. Uh, both of them, a huge fan. Kevin said that life has a game-like character and that you need to reinvent yourself mindset-wise and also other aspects of your life to get to the next level and then learn your lessons and then get to the, you know, the end enemy and then master that one and then you need another you. So you need to keep on reinventing yourself on the inside, on your outside all the time and understand, don't take yourself too seriously if something like this annoys you and understand it's a game. Mm. Do whatever needs to be done. I like that. So, you know, when you were talking about packaging an apple, I'm so pumped. I mean, one of my customers... Um, uh, we're recording a, a number of things for them for some big conference that they've got coming up. I can't say right now, but they, they, they sent me some uh, uh, Apple uh, uh, AirPods. AirPods, yeah, you know. The yeah. AirPods. And I've been wanting them for a while because I had some really nice, you know, JBL, which were quite good, but I lost yeah. them somewhere. I don't know where okay. I lost, probably in a plane. Yeah. They sent me this and I felt like that was the universe's way of saying, Tom, mm -hmm. 
here you go. There you and go, yeah. You open the package and you see this cute little thing. Yeah. And then when you open it up, Ta-da! they're right in there. Yeah. I and they're super just, cute and they're like yeah. held by a magnet. That's how they kind of click in. Right? And they're amazing. And I just, I'd never used these things before in my life, but when you take them out, they're just gorgeous. There you go. Of course, Apple products, I just heard it sync as I put them in. Apple products are great. They're so easy. It syncs with your phone immediately. You don't even have to do anything. Yeah. So I guess where I'm going with this is um, packaging matters because as soon as you get this thing, you just get excited to open that that product. I mean, the packaging Absolutely. is part of the product, isn't it? Absolutely. And I mean, I mean, imagine that you are the guy who is always wearing bright colors, or you're the guy who's always wearing um, some technology, or you're the guy who always has like a nice bow tie, or you're the guy with the crazy glasses, or you're the guy with the crazy socks, or you're the guy with whatever, right? This is a phenomenal conversation starter, and usually it's also connected to a compliment. So I think this about is- about bow ties, but I'm not sure. Um, who is it? Like there's somebody who regularly has bow ties, but it doesn't matter because, you know, it is like when there's you wear it your way. There. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's still very, very rare compared yeah. to, to what I see out there. But I kind of like so, bow ties. Go for it, you know, and then find, maybe find a designer who, you know, designs a new cut that maybe they are a little bit cut like, like your logo, or maybe, you know, they're, they're a little bit different. They are yeah. like, look at your core values and, and see if they could be also um, represented in, in a different style. And people will be like, wow, this is so cool. Like if this guy already puts in so much attention into the way how he's, you know, he presents himself, I want to know what's behind that. You know, yeah. it's like, what's his knowledge? What's his expertise? Like, what's his, what's his private life? Like I'm what does he it. eat? Like what is he all about? Like because <laughs> we're curious human beings. And when we like what we see, we want to dig deeper, understand the whole yes. concept. Okay, cool, Natalia. So before this goes any deeper into a personal branding session for me, <laughs> <laughs> let's, 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 let's open it up. Here's what, here's what I, w- I think our listeners would love to know right now. So they've got it. They're building their personal brand. They're feeling good. They got the glasses. They got the lipstick. They got the bow tie. They got everything going. But now they're hopping on to LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. How should people optimize their profile? What's the ideal profile? What does it look like? What are the, what are the elements in their profile that they need, they need to be looking at? So first of all, we need to understand that your LinkedIn profile is not an online CV. It is some type of landing page or sales page. And for everybody who's like, uh, no, that's too technical for me. Sales, oh no. Oh no. You know what? If you don't like it, then uh, let's use another example, the one of a shop window. So imagine- Well, if they don't like it, they're on the wrong podcast because this is the South Asia podcast. I don't know how they happened on this by accident. (laughs) Whatever. Some people are just weird. So it's like a shop window. Imagine you're going down the street uh, with your friend and your friend is on the left and you're talking and you're you're passing by this new shop and- um, you know, you're really in a conversation and you're talking and then you're like, oh, w- w- wait, wait, wait. There was something on the right side. And you grab your uh, friend by the arm and you, you look back and you see this beautifully decorated, crazy, colorful, different uh, shop window that tells you, whoa, what's this all about? So you ask your friend if you just can't walk into that store and then you walk around, you touch things and you put them on and, and who knows, maybe people also buy something. So this is... My job as a personal branding expert, my job is to make sure that people see your window, that they like your window, that they walk into your store, that they spend as much time as they can, that they have like a taste for for what you offer. And then who knows, maybe they also buy something, right? Mm -hmm. So make sure that you have a great Uh, profile picture because again it's like the cover of a book make sure it's professional but also approachable make sure you're saying that people should not have a picture of them you know drinking on the weekend (laughs) um yeah unless unless unless, exactly unless they're selling like great beer or wine okay i like that and and no no photos of them with their arm around a friend and then they, they they crop out their friend (laughs) Ah, <laughs> uh, no. And also, you know what, as we already talk about this, what about your dog or your cat or oh. your babies or kids or, mm. you know, wearing sunglasses or the emoji version of you? This is all good, but not for, for LinkedIn. 
Oh you know, my gosh. be professional. Is it just me? Am, am, am I getting old? I'm finding these weird avatars that people have as their profile pic. It's kind of annoying. It's unprofessional. Again, yeah. it doesn't make sense. This is LinkedIn is a platform that people use to generate leads, to do business, to, to work on their personal brands, to, mm. to learn about, to, to, you know, so many other things. But um, yeah, like what are you trying to achieve with this kind of picture? It's silly. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, no thought. And you know what's almost worse than the horrible profile photo? Is the <laughs> <Yeah>. no profile <laughs> photo. Yes. <laughs> Where you, you see their profile and it's just like the egg or it's just like this outline of a head. Just put yeah, a little think... it. And these days, headshots are so cheap and you don't even, you can just use your phone and just get, you know, get a nice selfie stick or get someone to do it for you with a nice background. And you've got yourself a good looking profile pic. Yep. And LinkedIn has filters. You know, if you don't want to invest in a professional photo shoot, you can go in there and, you know, change the, the light and all of that. But photo shoots are not as expensive. And um, people want to know how you look like. And for certain jobs, the way how you look like definitely has an impact. I mean, imagine you are um, the, 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 the lady, the gentleman who is at the reception of a five-star hotel. Mm. People want to see somebody who is self-confident and has a beautiful smile, right? If, and this would be important to me if I would be a hotel owner. And for me, beautiful is so many ways. And a beautiful yeah. smile is 10,000 different things. Yes. But if I don't see your face, I'll be like, why yeah. are you so shy right. already now that I can't see you? I'll be like, no, show me your face. If not, yes. I'm not going to hire you for that show position. Show the face and smile. Like, let yeah. me see, like, wow, you are proud to work there. And this is a fun place or a cool place that I would like to go. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we talked about the profile pic. I feel like one of the uh, least utilized, that's not even a word, the least <laughs> utilized, <laughs> the okay. least utilized pieces of real estate on a LinkedIn profile is that background photo. For sure. And talk to us about that. Yeah, a lot of people, I think they don't know that it exists. And that might be because I haven't found the button on the app to change it. I think you can only change it on the desktop version of mm. your LinkedIn profile. So the background picture in the end, for me, should show me within three seconds in which industry do you work? What kind of job do you have? Because a picture shows more than 10,000 words, especially when you have your own business. Show me, you know, you in action, you on a stage, you with people, you with awards. Um, you can mention your social media channels. You can show me with mm -hmm. whom you worked. You know, just, just use that as, um, as additional information, as an additional tool to, to show me within less than four seconds who you are, what you do, for whom, and what the end result is. Because that, that increases the likeliness of people spending time there. You know what I love is that, you know, most people, most prospective customers, by the time they reach out to you, they've already done a lot of homework. They've done a lot of research on you. So if you want to shorten that buying cycle and get them asking questions like, um, when can we get started? Do you need a deposit? How much is it? I mean, these are the kind of buying questions that you want instead of, okay, tell me who have you worked with before and do you understand our industry? Those are questions that really should be handled with your LinkedIn profile, shouldn't it? For sure. And you can use different sections. I mean, you can use the section underneath that. Um, the, um, like your about headline me. Or the summary? Yeah, exactly. The summary, you know, the about me section in which you say, I worked in these and these industries. Mm. This and this are my clients. You can show a picture, a presentation, a video, a screenshot of you working in that field. Um, you can write an article with 20 frequently asked questions and feature it because, you know, there's a new section. Um, I think it's beta tested at the moment. It's called ah, featured. So before oh, yes, that, that's right. The right? featured section, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So because before that, you had the about section, and at the end of the about section, you could like tinyly upload uh, the docu documents. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's yeah. gone now. So underneath that, you have this huge featured section. So in there, like literally throw everything in that people want to know that the ask the questions that they ask all the time. You can even do an introduction video in which you answer all of these questions. How amazing is that? I mean. See your LinkedIn profile as a free advertising space that you can use to build a relationship, 
tell your story, add value. That's very important. Turn your profile into a source for mm -hmm. others so that they learn, get informed, love, connect with you. And through that, you get their trust. And then we can talk about selling. Oh, I love that. So it's really about, you know, using everything you can on your LinkedIn profile to talk about, you know, the, the problems that you solve. So the problems yeah. that you solve and maybe who you solve it for and, and, yep. and your approach, like how yep. are you different from anybody else? But that's a really great place for you to start uh, to start selling. And then maybe, maybe have some sort of a, a call to action as well, like whether it's a link or an invitation to download something or, sure. or something like that, or a slide share deck that they could maybe look at. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. What do you want people to do? Because a lot of individuals, they forget that call to action at the end of the about section and they wonder why people disappear. Hey, what do you want people to do? Do you want them to call you, send you an email, sign up to your newsletter, get this free mini course of three days, download your mm. white paper? What do you want them to do? P.S. Get them into your sales funnel. Oh, I love that. So we can talk about funnels in a minute if we have time, but it's like, so you, you got to have this great, you know, your, your profile page is good. And, and now you've got to publish some great content. For sure. Okay. Because that's part of being a thought leader or your personal brand, positioning yourself. So can you talk to us about, you know, how do you publish some great content? You know, what, what are some ideas if people don't know what they should write about? So first of all, I think Gary Vaynerchuk said it in a beautiful way. He distinguishes between documentation. Oh, Gary B, he said it in a beautiful way. Uh, I think we're going to have to bleep that out, but uh, to, to keep our, 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 our general rating on iTunes. But anyway, between you and me for the extended exactly. <laughs> So in that partic like particular, but I do love um, Gary Vee. Don't get me no, wrong. No, same here. Same yeah. here. I think he's authentic, and and he is a great example for I stand for this, and I stand against this. I stand for authenticity and swearing. If you don't like it, please go away. He no, no, swears. If you don't like it, please. Right? F yeah, exactly. Please, f yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And he doesn't mean it in a mean way. It's right. just his brand. It's just easier to put it that way, so he doesn't have to. He doesn't have a filter. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Hashtag no filter. It works for him. He will be swearing this way. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, what was I wanted to say? I wanted to say exactly. Know. Documentation versus something create. something really good about what to post. Gonna, exactly. So uh, he said, you can start with documenting your journey instead of creating totally new content. So a lot of people, when I work with them, they're like, yeah, but I need to have a budget of 300,000 US dollars for my first video. I'm like, whoa, what are you trying to shoot? A one and a half minute video? No, 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 no. You don't need to do that. And you also don't need to write the next Shakespeare play and you don't need to write a 3000 word article. No. If that creation intimidates you, start with documenting your journey. And here you just just in quotation mark, um, need to change your mindset towards you walk around through life and business as a content creator. So no matter where you are in which situation, ask yourself, would that look good on LinkedIn? What kind of story can I tell around this? How mm. does that add value? Can I tell something that informs people? Can I teach something? Can I make people laugh through that? And if that's the case, take a picture with your smartphone. Don't buy a professional camera. From the beginning, take your smartphone. Mm or that you respect other people's privacy. And then, you know, post exactly that. Start with that. Start with documenting what you see. Uh, because content is all about adding value. And you either inform and educate people, or you entertain them and make them laugh. And you decide what kind of style you want. And you also, again, don't need to start with videos. You can start with a simple status update where you just write or write and take a picture. The important thing is that you show up and that you don't make it about yourself it's mm. about serving others. So the stuff that you see on Instagram, like, oh my God, look at me, mm -mm me, hashtag no filter, blessed on a boat, amazing, oh my God. <laughs> this is not what it's about. It's about others, not about you. Right. So people want to follow people that they're interested in and topics that they're interested in, right? So I love that, sharing tips, some business hacks, for example. Mm -hmm. And I love what you say, Natalia. I think what people need to do is they need to stop obsessing about what's that first post going to be? It has to be perfect. No, it doesn't. I mean, no. the first the first YouTube videos I ever did was over. It was in two thousand nine, so yeah. over ten years ago, and they weren't great quality. But we just had a camera and we just recorded me, you know, on stage doing something. We cut that into five different short 
videos. Yeah. Post, it's on my YouTube channel now. It's on, in a playlist called Oldies But Goodies. I love it. And they're, 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 they're cute and they're fun and they're raw. Um, yeah. But we, we've gotten thousands of views of those videos. I mean, people still like them, but, but it's night and day in terms of our production quality now. But we, yeah. we but just start. So what? You started, you got They're leads, all... you grew, you got clients and business out of that because you did it while others were chicken scared. Like, oh my ready. God, I'm not perfect. Yeah, Nobody's I'm not ready. Perfect. I'm just like, screw being ready. Like you're yeah. ready now. Get started yeah. now and do something. You can always improve, but at For least sure. get in the game. Otherwise yeah. the game's going to pass you by. Yeah. Yeah. 100% with you. For so sure. I hear you. So, you know, things about, you know, telling your story, giving people some insights, uh, giving them hope, setting examples, um, sharing customer experiences as well. That's a really yep. great thing. Like some success stories, what's worked for them. So yep. there's really no shortage of content, you know, and like you say, you really just need, you know, a, a phone. Uh, I think it's good to maybe have a, a, a mic or some kind yep. of a, a headset. So you get really exactly. good quality audio. I always tell people, People will forgive bad video sometimes, but if they can't hear you, yeah, there's no forgiving there. Uh, but then you can maybe put some captioning in, but, but that's, that's a bit more advanced. But at the very least, just have yourself some, some really good audio, maybe uh, an LED ring light or something. I've got this really cool light that's on my phone um, mm -hmm. when you're out and there's maybe some shadows or some darkness, but mm -hmm. it's really easier now than ever to really get going, isn't it? Absolutely. And there are so many articles on this topic and so many videos on this topic, like everybody who complains, but I don't know how to start. You know, there's this thing called Google or Bing or Yahoo or whatever. And you Google. can use it not only to look for adult content or to look for where you get your sushi from, but you can also use it for your personal development and for real problems that you have when it comes to content. You're also going to find information, free information on this topic. I love that. So I guess another way for people to, uh, you know, be on their way to developing their personal brand on LinkedIn is to, to expand their social network, right? Mm -hmm. What are some tips that you'd have around how people can, can grow their, their network or optimize their social network? First of all, we need to understand that it's not about just waiting and hoping that people approach you because mm -hmm. that's what a lot of people do. They're like, I'm going to create such amazing content and work so much on myself that everybody will approach me. <laughs> um, no, like some people will approach you. And yes, the more you grow and the more great content you get, yes, people will approach you. But I mean, as you also work in sales, um, I heard a lot of sales experts saying, you know, the connection between um, somebody who offers a product or service and a buyer is pretty much very often like in a dating situation. So a lot of people are shy. So imagine you can see that girl or guy sitting, you know, like literally two meters ahead of you, like in front of you, and you can see that they're interested, but he or she just will not come over. Right, so right. when you, when all the signals are there and they keep on you showing up, at, right? Approach them and yeah. say, Hey, I've seen you looked over. Right. And that's exactly what you can say. Especially when somebody visited your profile, that's so easy. It's like, Hey, I've seen you've been on my profile. I've seen you've also been interested. So send out a personalized contact request. Very important. Personalized right. contact request. Don't hit the connect button, but tell me, why I should the connect personalized with you. message. I love that. I use that all the time. We know each yeah. other through. Through. Right? We, have, we, we know each other through Natalia or we know each other through um, a, a networking group or we know each other through this LinkedIn group. But what's, what's, the, what's the, or we Connection. know each other through, Similarity. you know, we're in the same profession. And I like to connect yeah. with like-minded people, you know, but there there's got to be some reason, right? Don't be a stranger because people don't connect with strangers. Right. Make sure that you somehow have something in common. And then also big one, that is a game changer. Give them the opportunity to say no, because some people are like, I don't know, who are you? What do you want from me? So by saying something like, hey, I know you from da da da, -da this is what I do in one sentence without pitching. And then you yeah. say, would you without like to pitching, connect? Without pitching everybody, I'm repeating that. Without, without pitching, pitching, and don't no tell PDFs, anything. No, 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 no attachments or links to websites in that introduction, please. Would you like to connect? Kind regards, your name. Boom. So you're asking, they, would you like to connect? 
Exactly. And yeah. then if they already connected, then this is the first time they said yes. And we know we need a lot of mini yeses in order to get the big yes for the sale later on. I love that. I always finish with, you know, would you be open to connecting? Boom. Right. And most yep. people will. But you know what I find so funny? It's those people that respond from time to time and they say, hmm, I only connect with people I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's really n n lame. Can you imagine if someone went to a networking event and you were like, um, oh, hey, Tom, I'm Natalia. How are you? Um, can I get your business card? Hey, whoa. I only give business cards out to people I already know. Why are you here then? Why? <laughs> Why are you here? But it's funny. It's the same people that when you go to a live networking event, they only hang out with their coworkers. Yeah, most probably. Right? Yeah. They, 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 they stand at a table all together mm -hmm. at the networking event and they just huddle around each other and uh, they look around and they talk about how it's, you know, a lame event when really they're the lame ones because they're not actually out there. When I go to an event with my staff or when Elaine and I just go together, I'm just like, hun. You go there, I'm going there. And we'll meet somewhere in the middle. We'll meet at the bar. We'll meet at the food. Because then yeah. she can hit up 10, 20, 30 people. Yeah. I can hit up 10, 20, 30 people. We can cross and compare notes. Hey, Tom, you need to talk to that person. Mm -hmm. Elaine, oh my God, you should talk yeah. to this person. Yeah. Yeah. Boom, we introduce each other and it's just great. Yeah. And at the beginning, it's tough. And when you've never done before, it's tough, but it's all learnable. And the great thing is, for example, if you know, this is how we combine offline and online, you know, soon once this whole situation is over, if you know that you go to a real life online, uh, real life networking event, why don't you have a look at all at the list of all of the people who will attend, connect with the ones that you want to talk to at the real life event on LinkedIn. You already spoken with them on LinkedIn. You know how they look like. Once you are at the physical event, you can approach them saying, hey, you know, Tom, I, we've connected on LinkedIn the other day. How are you? It's so much easier. And because then you're not entering that place like, I don't know anybody. I hate networking events. I'm a shy person. I'm an introvert. 10,000 name excuses. A lot of people don't like it, especially when they do it for the first time. But when you prepare and use LinkedIn before that, it's so much easier. I love that. So people need to be using LinkedIn as a way to um, introduce themselves to people before these events. And that yeah. way, it helps them to, it helps that other person as well, because then they have a friend waiting, waiting to meet them. Yeah. I I mean, psychologically, it's such a big difference, especially when, when you don't like networking. Right. So how many people should people be connecting with? I mean, look, you and I are in fortunate positions right now, fortunate that, you know, I probably get between 10 and 20, it depends on the day, but between yeah. 10 and 20, sometimes 30, but yeah. let's say an average of 20 people wanting to connect with me every day. And that's just yeah. part of, as your audience grows yeah. and you're sharing more content and it starts reaching more second and third party connections, yeah. they all want to you know, connect with you and follow you. But for those that are just kind of getting started, I mean, how do you slowly build your network? How many people should you be reaching out to every day? So a lot of people are like, oh, I read that you can connect with 75 people per day and then you get blocked by LinkedIn. Do I have to connect with 75 people per day? And I say, no, you don't have to anything. Mm -hmm. Why don't we start with understanding how does your current network look like and what kind of people are lacking in your network, which is then based on the question, how does your dream network look like? With what kind of people do you want to be connected? Is it that you, you know, want to build a second life or live one day in, in Melbourne? Would it make sense to already connect with people in Melbourne? Do you, as a speaker, regularly look for people who have the title conference organizer and you want to get more speaking gigs in France? Would it make sense to maybe then connect with conference organizers in France? So, uh, you know, create two or three avatars that you want to connect with, use LinkedIn's filters, and then LinkedIn will give you a list of potential people. And um, it's important that you send out these personalized contact requests. And if all of that is ridiculous pain for you, then literally start with 10 connection requests per day. You know, and you do that for a week. And when you say, okay, cool, I'm still dying. I don't feel overwhelmed. And I've got positive feedback. You can increase it to 15 and do that for a week. And then you can increase it to 20. And then you can increase it to 50, whatever. It depends on... Um, how much 
time you want to invest into this, how much you want to grow, because the more people you connect with, where also it's important that you later on have a follow-up message. And it depends on your follow-up message, then how much time and, and resources you invest into this. Because I see people who literally record a personalized video for everybody that they connect with. So imagine you need to record 50 personalized videos of 30 seconds. Totally up to you, but start with a number that feels good for you. I like that. And it's got to be manageable, something that people feel yeah. like they can do and yeah. also be consistent with as well, yeah. right? For sure. You know, Gary Vee likes to talk about his, his $1.80 rule, you know, that, and, and I think that, do you want to talk a little bit about that? So he talks about this, this you know, giving, giving his two cents, but reaching out to a certain number of posts uh, following, you know, like 10 hashtags. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I think he introduced that strategy for, for Instagram. And I was like, does that also work on LinkedIn? Let me check that out. <laughs> so I literally have a list of like maybe eight people or 10 people with a huge audience. Mm. Um, and I, ha you know, I have linked to their uh, latest activity. So all the time, like every day after I've done all of my work, I do uh, apply Gary V's $1.80 strategy. And I, you <clears> know, <throat> share my two cents um, and I strategically so what did you link, link to their activity? Um, because the problem is a little bit on LinkedIn that it's not easy to find the content of the person, right? So you need to go to their profile. You need to scroll down to the section where you see all of their content. Then there's a new window that pops up and right. then you have this articles, uh, oh. status updates, posts, whatever. So then <laughs> there there's posts. So I click on right. posts and out of that, I've created a list so every day I just land on that specific link of that person, uh, you know, person's profile. So this way I can save time. Right. Uh, so what and you mean is you've saved, <coughs> what you mean is you saved the link to their, uh, the, that, that, that activity or, or their recent posts. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So every day you can just keep them all in a document yep. of like the 10 people that you're following. Yep. Yep. and just go straight shortcut yep. right to their most recent activity. Exactly. Brilliant. Well, this way you can really, really get the discussions going and you get a lot of visibility. And I sometimes, I literally have posts. Um, I have comments, not posts. I have comments. So I commented on the post of somebody with a huge following and I got 100, I think the biggest amount of likes I got was 103 likes on a comment. You got That's 130 crazy. likes on a comment. Yeah. That is awesome. And I love that because I've heard something that was like, <clears throat> what you want to do is you want to have the best comment on a post. Yeah. Because you'll get noticed, right? For sure. Like, hey, People will see your name. Who's this, who's this yeah. Natalia? Yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah, I absolutely. love that. That's awesome. 130 likes on a, on a comment on someone's post. That, that's, that's awesome. So about how much time do you think people need to be spending every day doing this kind of thing on LinkedIn, mm. you know, being social? Well, a lot of people are like, every day. And then I say, okay, well, you know what? Ooh. Let's start with once per week, 15 minutes. And then we increase it to two times per week, 15 minutes, and three times, whatever. Then once we have you five times per week, you know, increase it to 20 minutes to 30 minutes. And we both know that social media works in a way that it, um, it kind of influences our hormones because there's a lot of gamification in there mm -hmm. and we kind of get addicted to these likes and we want to see, oh, did somebody comment? Oh, did I get more likes? And oh, did that go viral? Like we talk about LinkedIn here, but people I react people like, shared my post. exactly, <laughs> you know, uh, it's the same thing. So, you know, start with being, like with regularly using that platform with something again that feels right to you. No, oh, I love that. So look, um, why don't we just wrap up? I think there's just been so much here that people really <coughs> get started, right? There's been so much here for people to get started. Natalia, what would you say is, you know, the number one thing for a sales professional in this current situation where it's tough to reach customers, it's tough to meet up face to face, Things are, you know, slowing down in the economy and could get worse. What should sales professionals do right now to build their personal brand on LinkedIn? 
I think it's all about relationship building and building trust at the moment. We know that people need at least five to seven interactions with a brand so that they recognize it and they need quite a few interactions until they buy. So depending on the industry and the product, it takes between what? I've read between 30 to 90 days before somebody is ready to buy. That's like mm. an average number. Right. So if people are scared right now and they don't want to buy right now. exploratory phase, right? Exactly. So if people are scared right now, they don't want to buy right now. So what you can do right now is invest in relationships, you know, um, create content, make them think, make them laugh. And who knows what will happen at 30 days, 45 days, 90 days, instead of just disappearing and you know blaming the economy or the current status or whatever really make sure that you add value um, through your content but also that's something a lot of people don't do on linkedin and that's just why you can add so much value by connecting people with each other so you know sarah sarah is good in so and so and you know uh, martin and sarah looks for somebody like martin and martin looks for somebody like sarah because they always wanted to work on such a project or on such a content idea why don't you connect them if they create some awesome content together they will dedicate 30 seconds towards the fact that this only happened because so and so connected these two together and this is how you get a free shout out and that's how people remember you as a connector as somebody who you know um, brings people together without expecting anything in return so you will be known for for being generous for being um, open-hearted for caring and i think this is incredibly important right now people look for authenticity they, um, they are they're tired of faceless, greedy, huge corporations. They're tired of perfect. They are tired of hashtag no filter because I can see the filter on it. So <laughs> be you, be more human and really invest in those relationships and ask. Like very often, you know, when you ask, how can I help you today? A lot of people will be like, oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, let me think about it. Be that person. How can I help today? How can I help you today? How can I serve you today? How can I make your day today? Tell me. Oh, I love that, Natalia. This is great. So where can people get a hold of you on LinkedIn? Well, they'll find me under Dr. Natalia Vihovsky. LinkedIn is my major platform. If people want to know a little bit more about, you know, the behind the scenes, then it's Instagram. But as you mentioned at the beginning, I've just published a book, Personal Branding with LinkedIn. You're going to find it on Amazon.com. So if you want to have a more structured and in-depth insight into everything that we discussed today, check out my latest book. This is so great. Thank you so much, Natalia. Great to see you again. This has been an awesome discussion. So uh, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you so much and talk soon. If you want to take your sales skills to the next level and learn how to master the entire sales process, join Soko Academy and get certified in Soko Selling. The link is in the notes.